Barry Owens, pastor of Trinity Bible Church. We welcome you to our service this morning. We'll be speaking on the believer's journey found in the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 11. I encourage you to turn in your Bibles, if you will, as we'll be reading those scriptures a little later. The key verse in that text is verse number 6. It deals with three of our essential doctrines that we'll be talking about. We also remind you that we have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We have an evening adult Bible study at 6 o'clock and a Awana at 6 o'clock. We have a Bible study on Wednesday nights. We'd love to have you here at 7 o'clock. We also have a morning breakfast for the men at 7 a.m. on Saturdays. The leaders, ladies get together once a month, and we also have a group called the Prime Timers. God bless you. Thank you for being with us as we prepare our hearts to study and examine God's Word. Let's pray. We ask, Lord, your blessings speak to our hearts as we share the Word of God together. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray these things. The key verse is verse number 6 in our scripture lesson, being confident. Being confident. We'll talk about that as we go along. Of this very, very, very thing. He which hath begun a good report, a good work, and you will perform it until the day of Christ. Now there are three essential doctrines of Christendom in that verse. We'll be talking about them as we go along. We see this is Paul's third, second journey as he goes to Philippi. We look back and we realize that Paul was a man who, after he met the Lord on the road to Master, became a person of journey. That's why we have our wagon wheel up here. We always, as Christians, are to be progressively moving forward in, the, in Christ. On Paul's second missionary journey, he goes to Caesarea, then Antioch, he goes to Derby, he goes to Lystra, he goes to Iconium, he comes to Troas, and God sends him across the Aegean to Philippi. And there we find the birth of the first church among European people. The Roman Empire reached out to this area. And so he is now in an area where there are people who speak Latin. And, and this is the very, very first church that is founded in the European Empire. And it is a blessing as we look at this church and how Rome is evangelized through that era, early era. The book of Philippians is also known as the book of joy. Some 12 times we find the word joy in it. It is also the book of the epitome of Paul. As we look at verse 14 of chapter 3, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. How did Paul get from verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work will perform it until the coming of Christ. Two, we find, verse 14, I press toward the mark. He writes his last letter to his dear friend Timothy, and he speaks of how I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is left for me a crown of righteousness, but not to me all in, but to all who love his appearing. So Amen. we see Paul's journey here. Okay? Now, Dr. Simran Mahopai, Mahopai, who uh, wrote an article in the Israel My Glory uh, magazine some time back, work, and spent a lot of time in the work with uh, people who were dying in hospital type situations. And this person took a record of all the different things people talked about when they were dying. And the three most prominent things people talked about when they were dying, she says, was this. <coughs> Didn't spend enough time with my loved ones. Spent too much time at work. And I did not press to reach the passions of my heart like I should have. I did not press, encouraging us to press toward the passion of our heart. And that author continues, follow your heart, pursue your passion. Follow your heart, pursue your passion. What did we find here in this verse, key verse? Being confident. 
Here we find something referred to what's in the heart. Being confident, okay, of this very, very, very thing that he which hath begun a good work will perform it until the day of Christ. Taking back on a journey some years ago. Some years ago. A man named Corey, a Carey, sold illegal alcohol, involved in rooster fights, dog fights, a very harsh man, always carried a gun in his pocket, mean-spirited, people were afraid of him. On one occasion, his son brought a friend over, and his friend was very, very fearful of this man. And as they were there in the house, the man pulled his pistol and shot a hole in the floor, scared the little boy to death. And then the man said, I've been trying to kill that fly all day. <laughs> December 29th, 1931, Carey killed his brother Garvin. Self-defense, but blew him away. A harsh man. He had a son. His son, on January the 29th, 1952, accepted Christ as a Savior. And then, and then, being confident of this one thing, that he which hath begun a good work, okay, a good work, will perform it until the coming of Christ. He who hath begun a good work will perform it to the coming of Christ. The journey of the believer. It's important that we recognize three doctrines here. The atonement, sanctification, and then glorification. Go back to key verse. Being confident, we find this is the sense of inward certainty. God working in you. The work has begun when you became a Christian. A journey has begun. I take you over to Romans 5, verse 11. Romans 5, verse 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received atonement. That's the beginning of the journey. Atonement. Big old Greek word. Katelika. To kalagi. You like that, don't you? Fortunate Greek is a unspoken language name known as Kone Greek, was what they spoke then. The root of that word is kate. The definition of this is to gather ward. To gather, okay. Secondly, times, utmost here, by width. Now that you have that, we can have our benediction. <laughs> Let's simplify the definition of atonement. So that you can remember it. Atonement. At one man. Get that? Atonement. At one man. It's the day you and Christ became one. <coughs> and then you began a journey with a partner, with a fellowship, with a person. At one month. The journey began with Paul on the road to Damascus. Struck down. The Catholics say he was on a horse. Protestants say he was walking. The Catholics had an artist to paint a picture of him on a horse. The Protestants didn't paint a picture, so I guess you decide which one he was on. I think he was on a horse because I had a horse named Dan. <laughs> My horse was the best in town. <laughs> Nonetheless, he was struck down and blind years 
what the Lord says. Arise, his name was Saul at the time, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. It shall be told thee what thou must do. This was the beginning of the at one month of Paul. His name was Saulus, means ask something. His parents, who were Jewish, lived in Antioch, who were Hellenistic or under the Greek um, culture, named him that because perhaps they prayed for his son. Maybe that's why that name. But his name was changed. He preferred to be called Paul, meaning little. Little. The little one in Christ. The little one, the little one at one in Christ. The little at one in Christ. Ramsey of theologian says, Paul the traveler. Paul the traveler, servant of Christ. The eulogy would be at one moment his journey. And so we find, being confident of this very thing, he which hath begun a good work. It began the day you became one with Christ in your salvation. At one month with Christ in your salvation. That was the beginning of your journey. The beginning of my journey. Then we find, as we progress along, the second doctrine in that verse, notice, has begun a good work Okay? We'll perform that good work in you. We'll perform. That's the doctrine of sanctification. That's the doctrine where it takes you from where you were you became a Christian to the person you became as you journeyed. The person Paul was on the road to Damascus to the person Paul came in Rome and chains. Told he was going to be soon martyred by he called him the Christian, and he penned the words, For to me to live is Christ, to die is dead. You can't hurt that kind of guy, can you? You can't hurt him. When they were raging upon Christ on the cross, what did he say as they spit upon him and sat his face and cursed him and said all those awful things? He said, Follow, forgive them. He was in control, wasn't he? I remind you, as I said last Sunday, Jesus was not murdered. He surrendered himself willingly on the cross for our sins. He was always in charge. He was never not in charge. So now we look at this process of perform, performance. What you become. Those who are involved in the athletical world, they're always working out, wanting to become better, better. Joe Lewis was working out to become a boxer, a better boxer. And he was working out, working, and his trainer says, Joe, you have a weakness. You love chocolate, don't you? I love chocolate. You gotta quit this chocolate thing. Man, I love chocolate. He said, you know what's good with chocolate? What? More chocolate. <laughs> right? Right? He's walking down the street one day just before the big fight, and he has that this big chocolate cheese. Just drooping with delight. Oh man. Oh. I don't want to be a champion. A chocolate pot. Kate said to Joe Lewis, eat me, boy. Come on, eat me. <laughs> no, I want to be a champion. Come on, Joe, eat me. Yeah, I want to be a champion chocolate cake eater. <laughs> <laughs> I love chocolate, too. <laughs> and I, my wife gets me chocolate ice cream, and I get big chunks, and I put it in this metal thermal thing so it won't break when I bang it and stir it. So I a half of chocolate ice cream, then I pull some chocolate Hershey on top of that, and then I pull some of that almond milk on top of that, then I beat it to, then I put some chips of ice in it, then I beat it to a foam. <sighs> well, we're now at the arena of performance, sanctification. God is performing in you, and God is performing in me, as it says right there, being confident okay, of this very, 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 very thing that he which has begun a good work in me will perform it. John 14, verse 20, 20 ye, ye and me and I and you. Become one. Atonement 
on atonement with Christ. Okay? Philippians 3, Philippians 2.13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. I'm not up here today because of Barry Owens. I promise you that one. When God called me into ministry, I said, but I was only 14, I thought, okay. You know, yeah, when you're 14, you think you'll never be 20. You'll never be. But the day they come. <coughs> But I'm very, I'm very thankful the Lord called me into ministry and that I'm at perfect peace because it is what He does. This past Saturday morning, we had a wonderful men's fellowship. Amen. Michael Cornell shared with a testimony, a very powerful testimony. It stirred my heart from a sermon I preached, and I had no idea God was doing that. And He thanked I said, Michael, I didn't do that. The Lord did that. Mm -hmm. I used to go pick them up and Michael didn't drive. And he went to take a driver's school and they said, Michael, you will never be able to drive. I told Michael, yes, you can drive. Mm -hmm. You can drive. Just try. Just don't try to drive my car. <laughs> <laughs> he now drives. Yes, and for the first time he stood his pulpit. And did a phenomenal job Amen. reading the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Correct to my occupation, by the way. <laughs> this is a good job. Anyhow, just funny. For it is God which worketh in you. Notice that verse, being confident, certain. And my old coach used to say that fortitude here, you know, that confidence right here. Being confident of that very thing, that he which hath begun a good work will perform. From the day you became a Christian, he is performing. Sometimes in ways you wouldn't really realize. Sometimes in things that you could never imagine. But he, he is working. Augustus taught me how to pin this point. The work which he has, the work which his goodness began, the work which his goodness began, the arm of his strength will complete. <laughs> his promise is yea and amen, and never was forbidden yet. The atonement. Notice the confirmation of the fact that he's working is found in verse 17. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, Inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, it works. It really, really does work. Psalm 100, the truth to all generations. I've only been pastoring in 60 some years, but as long as the Lord doesn't come, there'll be somebody somewhere preaching the gospel unto all generations. And this will never ever be outdated. Yeah. It'll always be the same. People are all, churches are all <coughs> divided up now because of the thing about lifestyle. Well, the Bible makes it plain about those subjects. What is a man to be, what kind of lifestyle in the pulpit, so forth and so on. It's very, very important that we do our pledge to the Bible because this is the last say so of all things. Hmm. So Paul here talks about this confirmation. He treasured a lasting memory that they all stood loyal together with evidence of the confirmation of their relationship in Christ. Sanctification. A good work in your, a good work in you will perform. Okay? Keep that in mind. A good work. A work. To accomplish is what this word means. I'll journey with you in a few of the Psalms. Psalms 86, verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord, 
my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered me, thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest of hell. Remember that. O oh God, the proud are risen against me. He talks about that. He goes on in verse 15, but thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. Go back to verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord. This is what he's talking about. This is what our verse is talking about. Being confident of this very thing, that this which he has begun, he will work with you through this, and you will grow and grow and grow and grow. Go with me up to another text. This is in Psalms chapter 4, verse 3. And uh, Psalms chapter 4, verse 3 and verse 4. Listen carefully. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. That's sanctification. That's the working of the Lord in our lives. Know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Verse 4. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. I like that verse. <laughs> I usually wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I know I should get out of my bed and get on my knees by the bed and pray. But sometimes I don't. Sometimes I snuggle up my pillow and pray in the, in the bed. And so that's, <laughs> that's my favorite little deal there. Said, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart up on your bed. Ponder that for a while. Uh, somebody told me, if you ought to get out of bed to pray, I sometimes do it, sometimes I just. Mm -hmm. Me and my pillow gets along real well. <laughs> <laughs> and we pray. That's sanctification. Jeremiah says this, I, I'll journey you to this. Let me see if I can find it. I have it pre marked. I know you're it by now. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse, 30, verse 39. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Remember that, okay? The Lord is working. What does he say? Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work will perform it. That's what he's doing until the coming of the Lord, until the rapture. And so we find until there is glorification. He's talking about the rapture of the church. He's talking about when we'll be taken up to heaven being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. That's the church age being raptured into heaven, and we are blessed with the atonement, the beginning, the at one with God, the journey, okay, sanctification, now glorification. So we come to the word Bethel. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Beth is a house. El is God. The house of God. There's something unique about being in the house of God, isn't it? Amen. I wish we didn't have to lock this church. There's a church in Lawrence that has never been locked since the day was built, way back. And they made a vow not to ever lock it because, as the book of Revelation says, the tabernacle will be open, the gate will be open, they'll be closed. Isaiah says, therefore thy gates shall be open continually. The house of God. A place to come and worship. The door is open. The Lord's going to come. He's going to take us up to heaven. Amen. And the door will be open. Isn't that one? It's open to you right now. It's open to me. Right now, something will happen and my heart stops 
meeting immediately at night, sit one off, the door will be open. It will be open. Take you back to the story. Here. Here we go. Sold illegal alcohol, entertained <coughs> dog fights, and gambling people coming to gamble, and usually a lot of money was lost or won, or a dog would die. Was involved in rooster fights, a lot of gambling. <coughs> His younger brother, Garland, involved in a lot of alcohol. They both loved driving fast cars, fast living. Big disturbance erupted one night uh, in front of the service station. Garland began to chase his brother with a pistol in each hand, shooting at him. Chased him out in the forest. Harry found it, went to a neighbor who had a shotgun that he longed for a duck hunt, asking, I want to borrow, I want my gun back, but I'm not going to hurt anyone, but that's needed to protect myself. Garland is in a bad way. He's back into his place of business and he's quietly trying to hide. And all I can kick the door in. Here he turned loose around. Mm -hmm. Blew a hole in his chest just above his heart. December 29th, 1931. <coughs> you know, right after Christmas. Here his son was born August 11th, 1933. Here he had a son who was born again, and that journey had its beginning, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. His son became a Christian January the 20th, 1952. Being confident of this one very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will be perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Carrie never got over killing his brother. Every morning before daylight or every night after sunset, he'd be seen standing over his brother's grave. But his little boy grew up and became a Christian, a born-again Christian, at one moment with God, at one moment with Christ, and a good work was begun. And that little boy's name was Jerry Falwell. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about that. Mm -hmm. What God did in that little boy's life, from that kind of home life to becoming the founder of Thomas Road Baptist Church in Lynchburg, Liberty Bible College. What God can do, atonement, my challenge, our challenge as we dismiss today is to be at one with Christ. Letting him perform a good work in our lives until the coming of Jesus Christ. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Bible teaches that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life and faith in Jesus Christ. It's a gift. For by grace are we saved through faith. It's a gift. Not of works, lest any man should boast. You say, well, I am a sinner. I realize that. We've all sinned. If you've broken at least one ten commandments, you're a sinner. What must I do? If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in our heart that God hath raised him from the dead, But here's the clincher. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. That's salvation. That's the at one moment. When your heart and our Lord's heart become one with the same, and you take that first step in that journey, and you see what God does in your life, and how He works and performs. From a home of a lot of 
bad things. And a father who committed shooting his own brother to death, a son who became a Christian. I ask God to anoint us, to anoint Trinity Bible Church with His Spirit. Let everything be done of the Lord, by the Lord, for the Lord. Let all things be done unto His glory. <coughs> when people sing, I say, praise the Lord. It's not the form of it, it's the word of God in their hearts as they sing it. To Him be all honor and glory. Give praise to Him. Because, very carefully, being confident that which is the bottom pillow of your heart, being confident of this very, very, very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the coming of Christ. Amen. Let it work freely. Amen. Let it work. Anoint us with your spirit. And if you do not know Christ as their Savior, may they come forward and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. Any of you need, would like to come and just dedicate or rededicate your heart. Lord, I want you to perform in my life. Lord, help me to step back and let you do a good work in my heart. And God has made it upon your heart to do that. I you come forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Some people come forward.